The ability to take off and zip along in a flying car is no longer a fantasy. Companies from startups to aerospace heavyweights are competing to develop and make them commercially viable. Designed to elevate us, free us from highways on the ground to skyways in the air. Flying cars could change how we commute, work, and live. The designs vary, but the cars may look more like futuristic helicopters or oversized drones. Some will fly without a pilot, others are designed to be air taxis. At the forefront of all of this is Marcus Lang, a Canadian engineer and inventor. In the rolling hills and open skies of Warkworth, Ontario, he came up with a novel way to drive. I think we've all had dreams of complete three-dimensional freedom. I remember as a young boy walking to, to school and sort of, you know, wondering if there would ever be an aircraft where you could just jump in and be able to take off vertically and fly wherever you wanted to. It was in the summer of 2009 when Lang was working on a different aviation project that he began to realize his dream could become reality. I did some calculations with the current technology and uh, realized at that point that electric VTOL was not only possible, but was practical. And uh, that was the eureka moment. So this is where it all happened. Of course, this is nothing like what this place was like uh, when, when it was a, a full shop, but uh, uh, I still have a few pieces left. He went to work in his basement and he was able to build the first prototypes of what is now known as Blackfly. A new form of vehicle that doesn't need a runway to fly. It's an electric VTOL or EVTOL, which is short for electric vertical takeoff and landing. I think our house became a factory. Uh, the basement was used for basically doing all the structures work. The kitchen were basically used for manufacturing motors. We used to bake the motors and the uh, in the oven, boy, would that stink. <laughs> in October 2011, the moment of truth. Lang flew his first proof of concept in his front yard. I found myself at the end of our driveway. Uh, my friends and neighbors were behind a barrier of cars that we had set up. And I figured just like in skiing, I'll do a skidding turn in front of them. The uh, edge of the wing contacted the lawn and I still recall sort of going mm, this isn't going to end well but uh, the propulsion systems reacted so fast that after landing at that point I realized how incredible this technology was. A few years later Lang moved the majority of his operations to Silicon Valley in Northern California a hub of tech innovations and startups. It was here his company Opener clandestinely set to work on perfecting Blackfly. It is a personal aerial vehicle. It's not designed for multiple people. I mean, it's designed for one individual to give them the freedom to basically go where they want to go. The nice thing about uh, our vehicle is uh, both the United States and Canada. It is classified as an ultralight aircraft. In Canada, you require an ultralight license, which is um, relatively easy and straightforward to, to obtain. I think the most unique thing is that I can be a, an operator, you can be an operator, anyone who is over the age of 18, which is our kind of limit, is able to learn in the course of uh, two days and a, a few hours of simulation how to safely fly this aircraft. So that is something that is exceptionally novel and really incredible to be able to give that type of experience to regular people. What RPM are the motors running at right now? Christina Menton is the Director of Operations, Flight Testing and Propulsion Lead at Opener. So the aircraft is almost exclusively made from carbon fiber. The wings and the fuselage are made from carbon fiber. Uh, the propellers are carbon fiber. We have uh, electric motors that we build ourselves in-house and have designed in-house. And these are the most uh, power-dense electric motors in the world for their size. Uh, they're about four and a half pounds and are just over 25 horsepower. Menton says one of the unique features of this all-electric vehicle is it's amphibious, meaning it can take off and land on water. And it has a return to home button. We have auto land features. Uh, so basically when you get close to the ground, the aircraft will take over and the aircraft will land you so that you can land, uh, whether you press return to home, it'll land you right back on the spot that you want to be, uh, or you bring it down to a new location. Blackfly is controlled by a joystick, can fly in 20 mile per hour winds and 
operate in extremely cold weather. Anyone up to six feet, six inches tall, weighing 200 pounds or less, can use it. In the United States, which is our primary market, um, we have uh, very serious weight restrictions. So the American uh, vehicles have a 20 plus mile range for an operator that's uh, 200 pounds. In the United States, we're restricted to 62 miles an hour. In Canada, uh, we don't have those weight constraints and also we don't have speed constraints. According to Lang, all testing is done autonomously and Blackfly has flown more than 35,000 miles in test flights. It's unbelievable. I could not have conceived um, where we are today from where we were 10 years ago. Developing Blackfly doesn't just happen uh, in one swift moment. It's uh, an evolutionary process. And uh, to date, we have uh, built uh, and flown 40 aircraft. Every single aircraft has been an improvement on the predecessor. The EV tall field is hyper competitive. So Lang needed to find ingenious, creative minds to help fulfill his dream. And he found them in Canada. Yes. Menton and her classmate, Eleanor Lee, who is now the plant manager, had just finished their mechanical engineering degrees at the University of Toronto when they got the call from Lang. Both signed on and moved to the U.S. before they even knew exactly what project they'd be working on. Marcus basically came along and said, oh, we're making this huge carbon epoxy part. Do you want to be part of our team? And I just said, yes, yes, here I am. I first met Marcus on a phone call the day before my last exam of university. At the time, the company was completely in stealth mode and uh, he wasn't able to say what the product was, who the investors were, or really any of the technical details. Uh, but I could get from the phone call that uh, it was a pretty exciting and innovative opportunity and decided to take the leap to jump on board. For years, Lang worked in the shadows, keeping his invention secret while recruiting. It was only in 2018 that he began to lift the veil, letting the public get a glimpse of Blackfly and how it works. He gave us a tour. This is our testing lab, and what you see before you here are different propulsion systems that run 24-7. And then finally we have uh, what we call the punch test, and it basically is going to operate, uh, it's going to go from standstill to about 80% max thrust in about 1.2 seconds. This testing is all about making sure that you've got very robust systems. That was some thrust, for sure. It works, I guess. <laughs> it works. It's been a long process, but it seems that hard work is paying off. From the first day we went flight testing, you know, a few things didn't work and we were only trying to fly 10 miles. And over the years, as a team, we've flown five miles, 10 miles, 30 miles, and 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 miles. And we flew in front of 60,000 people. Like, that's incredible. So all of that you know, has been my personal success and also the success of the company. And I'm really proud to be part of this. <laughs> Here she goes. In July 2021, at a rare public appearance, Lee, Menton and Lang flew Blackfly at a popular aircraft show in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The annual event can draw hundreds of thousands of spectators. The flight is incredible, like you have panoramic view of anywhere that you fly at. It's an experience. <laughs> I told this to a few people at Oshkosh, when you're in the aircraft, you feel like you are the aircraft and the aircraft is you. That just keeps getting better and better. Still awesome. Christina showed me how to do that. The company hopes to start selling Blackfly soon. Lang says for now it can only fly in rural areas and not over cities. Safety is the number one priority. The whole idea with the aircraft is that it has to be safe for someone without a pilot's license to be able to fly. We have to have a triple modular redundant system. So triple modular redundant means that there's three systems. So if one system fails, there's still two systems that are functioning and then you know which one has failed and which one you should be uh, flying off of. Uh, it, it does also have a parachute and we consider that the very last line of defense. 
The first versions will likely be expensive. Lang is keeping the price tag under wraps. But he believes as the industry advances, it will become accessible to more people. He told us the ultimate goal is to produce tens of thousands of these vehicles at a price that would be similar to the cost of an SUV. And if that becomes true, it will make his childhood dream take flight. I started the project because I want one. They're going to be going on sale in the very near future, and I'm going to get the first one off the line. <laughs>